Okay, we've confirmed that, yeah, some of the categories of planets, like the inner rocky ones, they're all made up of roughly the same stuff. Nothing that exciting. And it matches with what we expected from measuring the abundances from the sun. But they're not all the same size. That's right. So if they were all made of the same stuff, you expected them all to be the same. But in fact, the planets, as we saw earlier, are very different from each other. And one of the biggest differences is size. I mean, going from Jupiter to some tiny asteroid, we're talking millions and millions. Yeah. In fact, this is way, way, way out of scale. This would be, again, far smaller than a pixel compared to anything else here. So how does size make a difference? Now, one way it makes a difference is by affecting the gravity. Yep. Now, gravity attracts everything to everything else, as we've just talked about. It's attracting you to me and us to the floor and the nearby mountain range to us and so on. And um, basically, if a planet is bigger and heavier, it's going to attract things more. But also, if it's large, somewhat at the surface is going to be further from the middle, which makes yep. the gravity less. So what you'd really want to have very strong gravity is a very heavy but very small planet. So you want a very dense planet, more like the inner planets, but also relatively of good size. There's enough density, so you get enough gravity. Yeah, and in practice, something really big, the, the extra weight outbalances the bigger size. But um, nonetheless, if you had two things with the same mass and one was larger, less dense, it's going to have less gravity at its surface. So here's the gravity of all the planets, with one set to be the value of Earth. And you can see that Jupiter wins. I mean, it's not that dense, but it's so big that it's so more than compensates big. for it. But this is, I mean, Saturn's surprising, right? I mean, if you look at Saturn and Neptune, they're not that much more in terms of gravity to the Earth, but they're much bigger. They're much bigger, but they're also much larger. So there's more mass pulling you down, but you're further away from it. So that cancels that out. So it really is that delicate balance between size uh, and mass. Yep. So you can think about what life would be like. I mean, life on Jupiter would not be fun, but there's no solid surface anyway, so no one's going to be jumping on the surface of Jupiter. Um, if there was a surface to jump on, and Saturn is Neptune, which there isn't, you could jump about as hard as you could on Earth. Um, you'd weigh about the same weight we do on Earth. No, no big deal. But let's go to somewhere fun. What about Mars? OK, so Mars is sort of one third the gravity of Earth. So uh, you could jump about three times higher. I would weigh three times less. That'd be kind of nice. So we get free diet plans and we become superhuman. Yes. Where it becomes a real trouble is some of the smaller asteroids where the gravity becomes so light that you could uh, um, it'd be very dangerous to jump. We just saw the sample return Hayabusa and it, they couldn't land on the asteroid. They just bounced off. The gravity was so incredibly light. So essentially, if there was some sort of event that pushed you up, you could, in theory, almost get flung off the asteroid. Like if you've got an asteroid that's only a kilometer in size and you do a standing jump like this, you'll, you'll escape. You'll never come down again. So what about the reverse? Now let's imagine you could. Imagine for some reason you formed on Jupiter and then went back to Earth. Well, anything that for a life form that lived on a really heavy planet would presumably have to evolve to have very strong leg muscles and thick bones and so on. And so they would be ridiculously overqualified to exist on the low gravity. So it's kind of like us going to Mars, right? It's, a, yes. it's that big difference. We can jump higher. But what if we lived on Mars and went to Earth? It'd be pretty tough. I mean, if there were any Martians, which there aren't, just to be clear on this, yes. I would have seen them long since, um, they would find it very difficult on Earth because they'd weigh three times as much. Now, humans can survive three Gs acceleration. We get that in the takeoff of the space shuttle, but yep. you sort of push back in your chair. So it's not, not, not a lot of fun. You don't really want to walk around. But I guess two or three times the gravity, by dint of a lot of exercise and probably a fair number of heart attacks, maybe you could manage to struggle around somehow. But it would be a little bit difficult. Yep. But I think actually the really low gravity is going to be the hardest. Yeah. I mean, if every time you kick off the ground... Um, You're potentially flying off into space. I also like to imagine what it would be like to play a game of cricket or baseball on a on a, on a vast asteroid. Uh, being English and we're not very good at cricket, I think this is a place where we've got... It's your only chance of winning a competition, Paul. <laughs> yes, because you hit the ball and you could easily knock it into an orbit. So it'd go right around the asteroid and come back. So you never know it's not going to be caught out. So, oh, good, there goes the ball. Oh, wait, in about 20 minutes it'll come around from over here. Here it comes, here it comes. Oh, missed it again. Oh, well, we'll just wait another 20 minutes. It'll so come the next again. ashes will be held on uh, a nameless asteroid in the asteroid and belt. And at last, the English might have me. a chance of winning. Let's <laughs> not get too far ahead of ourselves. <laughs> yes, uh, but it's really very difficult if you're trying to work on these things yes. because every time you kick, you'd fly off into space. And you'd then be, even if you're going to come down again, you might well spend several hours in your space suit spinning, probably vomiting inside your space suit as you rotate. It wouldn't be a lot of fun. And this is important when we talk about in the space course about both human space flight and also getting stuff and traveling in space. It's actually the gravity that really controls your missions. That's right. Another interesting consequence of gravity is mountain ranges. 
Now on Earth, we get mountain ranges. This yep. is part of the Himalayas. I think it's the mountain Niguri um, on the, uh, in uh, Nepal. And on, on Earth, the biggest mountains are about 10 kilometers high. So Mount Everest is you know, just under nine yep. kilometers. Is there, so is there a limit to how big a mountain well, can get? Well, there isn't really. There is really, because if it was much bigger, uh, its weight would be so much it would actually cause the rock underneath to liquefy and float away. It would depress the crust of the earth underneath it. So there ends up being a physical limit to how much the earth essentially can support. That's right. If you make mountains out of rocks, and that's all you've got, I mean, the same elements we've just been talking about, they have a certain amount of strength and a certain weight. And on earth, that limit is about 10 kilometers. So Mount Everest is about as high as you could make a mountain on earth. If, I mean, you could make it out of some different, you could probably make a bigger mountain out of polystyry actually, because it's low density. Uh, but if you're trying to make it out of rock, there's maybe you can get up to 12 kilometers or possibly even 15, but you're not going to make anything much bigger. But no matter what volcano or eruption or earth you do, you can have teams of bulldozers pushing the stuff up because it will just, the pressure of the weight will cause the rock at the base to liquefy and flow away. So if, the, if, so if you're getting this density and this mass being pulled down, what if you then change the gravity? What if there is less pulling you down? Yeah, so if there was less gravity, you can have bigger mountains. So here is Mars, this is Olympus Mons, the biggest mountain we know about in our solar system, which is about 30 kilometers tall. It's about, yeah, three times bigger than Mount Everest. And the gravity is three times less on Mars. That about fits. So the pressure at the base of Olympus Mons is about the same as the pressure at the base of Mount Everest. So there Three are... times more rock, but three times less gravity. It's going to give you about the same pressure. So, you, so then the pressure on top of Olympus Mons is about the same as the pressure on top of Mount Everest? Well, they're both about zero compared to what you're looking underneath yeah. it, yes. I mean, air pressure is irrelevant compared to the yeah. pressure under miles of rock. So. Yep. Um, so yes, big mountains, you want to look for a small planet. And in fact, as you get a planet small enough, the mountains get so big, they start becoming an appreciable fraction of the planet. You look at a really big planet like this one. Uh, this is uh, Uranus, I think, or possibly Neptune, hard to tell from this angle. Um, <laughs> it's pretty damn near spherical. Yeah, there's not a lot of on the surface. It's pretty smooth. It could have mountains. I mean, if you said the gravity is about the same as the gravity of Earth, you could have a mountain about 10 kilometers if it was made of rock. In practice, it's made of ice, and ice is not as strong as rock. So, so the mountains would be smaller. And we also haven't gotten really that close to Uranus or Neptune to see features five and, kilometers. And, the, uh, and there's a, a very thick atmosphere. So in fact, we're talking about gas here. So basically, a big planet, even, even if it wasn't gassy, is going to look like a sphere. So here, for example, is the Earth, sort of what we said is a fairly small planet. But this is pretty damn much a sphere. Yeah. And that's because basically every bit is trying to be compressed towards every other bit. And you can't have very big mountains. So which part of it are we looking at here? I think the Himalayas would be uh, right over, here, over yeah. there on the side there. And they're going to be so small, you're not going to see them on the scale from space. So because, I mean, I guess even though Mount Everest is still the largest mountain, it's nowhere near compared to the fraction in terms of yeah, size Yeah, I mean, this is more than 10,000 kilometers across. And it's, tens, it's, it's one in a thousand. So we're trying to find a feature one in a thousand, which we're pretty much not going yes. to do. So basically, any big planet, they're going to look very much like a sphere because their gravity means that you can't have big enough lumps. And by the time you get into a smaller thing, this is Ceres, now you're starting to see... It's roundy, but it's lumpy roundy. Yeah, you now actually can see the lumps. The lumps are now maybe 1% of the it, size it, of the It almost objects. looks more golf ball-esque. That's right, because now the gravity is weaker, so you can have taller mountains and the radius is less, so the ratio of mountain to planet mm -hmm. is smaller. And if we, what if we shrink it more? And now you're definitely talking about um, very lumpy, irregular things. So by the time this is 433 Eros, an asteroid, it's only a few kilometers across, and now I don't know if you consider this to be the planet and that's the mountain, or maybe that's the planet <laughs> and this is the mountain. Or it's just one giant mountain almost. <laughs> it's, but basically these small things can be very lumpy because there's not much gravity, so you can get away with very large lumps, lumps that are as big as a planet. So one definition of an asteroid is actually something that can have mountains as big as it is, so they cease to look spherical, and I think that's one definition we briefly decided to decide what's a planet or not. That's right, so it's the, the idea that you have enough gravity to pull you into a spherical shape is one of the things that we differentiate between potential planets and everything else. That's right.